Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This video is looking at bearings questions. Now, bearings questions form some of the hardest exam questions out there involving trigonometry. Very simply, I know you all know what a bearing is, but bearings start from north, are always written with three digits, and go around clockwise. So this here would be a bearing of approximately 060, 060 degrees. Or around here would be a bearing of closer to 300, because we're going from here around. Now, this video is essentially going to be four questions. Have a look at each of them, read them, give it a shot yourself, and then if you get it right, this one's 300, you can skip my explanation and move on, very simply. All right, so, an orienteering course is triangular in shape and is marked by three points A, B, and C shown in the diagram. In this course, the bearing of B from A is 50, the bearing of C from B is 120, the bearing of B from C is. Now note, it's a question two in an exam, so it should be relatively straightforward. The key thing about these bearings questions is the word from. Note how often it appears. The bearing of B from A means starting at A, then looking north and then looking towards B, of B, meaning you're going to end up looking at B, from A. So from A looking north, of B meaning to B. That's this way, is 50 degrees. Then the bearing of C, so that we end up looking at C, from B. So from B, north of C to 120. Which helps us when we're asking, well, what's the final point asking for? The bearing of B from C. From C is incredibly important because it means we're starting C and looking north. And the bearing of B is this angle here. All right. Note, it would be very easy to assume it was A and stop early. Also, it would be easy to go the other way from B to C. Now, the key to these northing lines, and why you should always draw northing lines in nice and clearly, is that they are parallel. So I know that this line here is parallel with this northing line. I mean, if I have a line connecting them, this angle and this angle are co-interior. They are both inside that pair of parallel lines, meaning that they must add to 180. So if the top one is 120, this angle here must be 60, which means that this rotation that we're looking for originally would be 360 take 60 is equal to 300. Hence the answer of D. All right, once again, second question. Have a read of it, have a go at it yourself. If you get the answer C, you're wrong. So listen to my explanation. Note that it is a question nine, so it makes it a harder question. With these type where a diagram is not given, then an accurate diagram is absolutely vital. So here, we're told that M and M, M and P rather, are exactly the same distance from the third point O. So it feels like O is going to be our central point. So I'll put O here. If it let me draw O. Right. M, the bearing of M from O is 38 degrees. As soon as you have O placed, or as soon as you place a point, put a northing line in. This is north. Then 38 degrees is about this far out. And out here is M. Then the bearing of P from O is 152 degrees. So if we go 152 around and head down, and we want this distance to be the same as this one, because this one, P is the same distance from O as M. And that there is 152. <clears throat> then the question is, the bearing of P from M is. So the bearing of P from M is, if we put the northing line in at M, is the angle around until we're looking at P. Now, we all know that our diagrams are not going to be very accurate. So this could possibly be exactly 180 degrees. And in the exam, many people circled that because it did look like one was due south of the other. 
Well, let's have a little bit of a think about this. This M is at an angle of 38 away from that north line. If I continue that north line down, this angle here will be 28. So, because 152 plus 28 is 180. So this green triangle here has an angle of 28 away out, which is not going to push it as far away from that north-south line as this. So essentially, M will be further east of O than P is, meaning that this bearing will be greater than 180. This bearing here will be greater than 180 degrees, making the correct answer between 180 and 270. All right, third question. Once again, have a read and consider it, and then have a go at answering it. It's again a question nine, so a hard one. All right, what this is asking is which of these calculations will get us the correct length of NP? Now, we need to start off once again by drawing a diagram. M, N, and P are, form vertices of a triangular course for a yacht race. M, N, and M, P is 4 kilometres. The bearing of N from M is 70. The bearing of P from M is 180. The number of times M is written, we'll treat M as the central point. Good place to start. This is M. Now, we know that the bearing of N from M is 70 degrees. So if we put a northing line in here, and then the line out here at approximately a 70 degree angle, there-ish, to the point here, which would be N. And then we're told the bearing of P from M is 180, which means due south, of M is a bearing of 180 degrees, and that point down here is P. It's a bracket. We know each of these is four kilometers, and I will write in the bearings. We know that this bearing here is 70, which means we know this one here is 110. And what we're being asked to do is to find the length of n of np, so from p up to n. And that's what we're being asked to hunt down. And these three people do it three different ways. And we've got to try and consider whether their idea is stupid or not. Now let's look at Graham. What has Graham done? Well, Graham has used the cosine formula, which I think is the best way to go here. You can see how he has his two squared numbers, which is four squared and four squared, minus two times four times four times cos 110, which is this angle here. And he square rooted it to find x. So I'm liking Graham. Graham has certainly got it right, and lots of people in the exam picked Graham only. But it's not actually the right answer, because the others have some quite logic ways of doing it. Let's look at Tran. Let's have a see what Tran's done. First of all, how has Tran come up with an angle of 35? 35 seems like an odd angle to be working with. What you've got to remember is that this triangle is isosceles. This triangle is isosceles, meaning that the base angles are equal. Since the whole angles in the triangle must add to 180, this angle here is 35 and another 35 here, because 35 and 35 makes 70, with 110 makes 180. That's probably where the 35 has come from. And then we can see the setup is sort of like sine rule. So if I was finding x using sine rule, I would do x over sine of 110 equals 4 over sine 35, because that's using opposite pairs. 4 over sine 35, x 110. x equals sine 110 comes up. So 4 sine 110 over sine 35, which is exactly what trans written. So we're liking trans so far. What about Shelley? What's Shelley done? Well, Shelley hasn't used the sine or cosine rule. She's gone a slightly different path. 
Shelley has used another trick we can pull with isosceles triangles only. That if you drop a line down the middle, you create a right angle and you bisect the bottom one. So this length will equal this one. All right, so then she's taken this triangle here. And she says, well, I want to find this adjacent side here, adjacent. And she's saying that the thing that links the adjacent with the other side she knows, the four, is cos, because that's adjacent and hypotenuse, because now we're working at the right angle triangle. So she's saying that cos apologies, cos 35 is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Then she's multiplying the four up here. Four cos 35 equals adjacent. And that's given her this length here. So what she's done is then she's done double that to get the second one two times, which is where this has come from. So Shelley's way will work as well. All three of them will get the correct answer and E is the correct answer for this question, but not an easy question. Now, last example. This video, I'm afraid, has gone on quite long enough, so I'll let you do this example on your own home. Have a shot at it. We'll go through it again in class. It is a short answer question. It's not multiple choice, but it's quite early in the piece. My hint for you would be to remember that this one here is co-interior with this one, so therefore you know that this angle is 40. And after you've got that, the rest becomes relatively straightforward. All right, good luck and thank you.